but we have to see together what is the best way forward to enhance all of us. Uh, my biggest takeaway is really we cannot exist as an organization by ourselves. We need to continue to capacitate ourselves. We've seen um, a whole new world, a whole new dimension. Corporate social responsibility should not be plainly corporate at all. You have the concept, you have the output, but what's the outcome? Injecting the love for humanity into your corporate social responsibility is the key to have a successful outcome. Philanthropy grows as we practice it effectively. Every engagement that I had in the last eight years shows the philanthropy level of our partners. And I hope that uh, as we go along, a lot of our stakeholders will also go with us. ISPA is globally recognized. So uh, if we have funders around the world, it creates credibility for the philanthropy, for the NGO. The, the founders or the owners tend to do all the things so they cannot scale up. One key component to ensure sustainability by hiring the correct, talented people with the right culture, knowledge, and skills. AI is moving very fast. Technology is going to play a key role, most of all, improving the output. Technology will play a key role in the philanthropic community, and it is very encouraging to see everyone trying to stay on top of it. So as a local chief executive of our municipality of Alegria, I am so happy, overwhelmed. You know, there are so many things that we wanted to do, but uh, there's a lacking. We need to collaborate. So Spinning Global is very glad to trailblaze uh, enabler for building the ecosystem on philanthropy. We have influenced the European Chamber to also join in our ecosystem. So they will anchor the corporate sector, use philanthropy in the core of its strategic direction as well. As the director of the AVPN in the Philippines, it is also our thrust that we continue to develop the landscape of funding network in the country. Within AVPN, we have 600 members across 35 countries, and we have 150 plus uh, funders actually already make a collaborations in Philippines. Means that there is a, a lot of opportunity for stakeholders in Philippines to explore. And one of the biggest threats is the health impacts of climate change, both in terms of health outcomes, but also the impact on health systems. Here in our event today, we'll be talking about what are the different strategies and bringing together policymakers, funders, implementing organizations, thought leaders to push this agenda forward. Race to Net Zero Philippines was established by UCCP and then UN gave us a roadmap to apply as an accelerator of the Race to Zero global campaign. And now here we are launching this campaign in the Philippines for the first time. Philanthropy really plays an important, in fact, a key role in making this happen. Let us continue to nurture an environment that will transform leadership and social responsibility to the next level and work together to make this world a better place for all.
for this year's conference is Nurturing Transformative Change in Philanthropy. We want to evolve and we believe that only transformative change in the impact of philanthropy can get us to scale and get things done. So this is a venture where the religious and lay people work together, where there is uh, no uh, superiority or uh, like we don't have clericalism here. Here both clergy, uh, laity, we all work together for the common good. I realize that Spring Rain Global has grown a lot, engaging and involving more sectors of our society and responding to more needs of our people, independently of their colors, races, nationality. And I feel that we are not just participating in philanthropy, but that we are really uh, part of a uh, global transformation. Yeah, no, I think uh, it's a very timely event given the challenging uh, funding landscape that we're facing here in Asia, but also globally. The whole world is talking about localization, which means that it is these local actors that are going to be placed to drive the development agenda going forward. There are a lot of encouraging trends in Asian philanthropy. We know, of course, that there's a huge wealth transfer that's about to take place. Organizations like this that gather people from across the social impact ecosystem really play a role in fostering those discussions and bringing attention to some issues that haven't been in the forefront before. So I think we're, we're at a place where there's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen. For the new PDOs, always make sure that charity should always be organized and structured. And that is what is Spring Ring Global is giving to us. This is a long game. To do that, we need to be essentially sustainable, which means that you might need to make a profit. And these two are not uh, you know, against each other, but they actually go very well. Technology is like a tool, we can use it for good, we can use it for evil, but I believe that if we use it from the right intentions and for good, we can become a lot more productive. The PDOs right now are in need of uh, putting up systems than ever before. They're solving uh, bigger problems. It's very important that they're crystal clear with what the why is all about. In the Indian context, we are seriously looking at how the SRG can play a very vital role in bringing all the religious congregations together so that we can bring a lot of changes in a more effective manner, focusing on seven pillars of capacitation, which is the strongest you know, the point of SRG. With all these things, I, I am very hopeful, the congregation is very hopeful that uh, hard work, God will touch the hearts of donors and other people, um, civic association, uh, you know, to help us. In this conference, na kita ko, I really have to have everybody in the same boat, in the same plane, allowing them to enter into the system. And now with uh, almost 21 people here, we can do just that. Very important for me is the system. We have yet to improve so much in documentation and in the system. My belief has been cemented that uh, sports can really be a unifying factor, you know? 
am pretty sure that we're all going home inspired and we both use the knowledge and the experience of others. So this event is really a game changer because every year we are changing transformation. So we got to adapt, embrace the changes. I'm really happy to be surrounded with all the powerful and positive energy. Togetherness and tightness across all the PDOs and I think we have matured together. And seeing what we preached last year about ecosystem now is coming together. I believe that these collaborations between AVPN and SRG is to supporting the ecosystem of uh, social enterprises and also non-profit in the Philippines and also on how we bring social investors to supporting this capacity building uh, fund. Thank you, Lord, for this hand-picked invitation of this noble undertaking. No, there's nothing more that I can say, but the best would lead us to where we are. Thank you to all of you for not giving up on your mission and for always, always being there to the people that you serve. And this is our SRG Ecosystem of Good, signing off our 8th SRG Asian Philanthropic Development Conference. And see you all in... Mission, service, and development work in the new normal mean developing and implementing cost-effective, impactful service, fundraising for different advocacies. Bago sa world ng philanthropic office yung Camillians, wala talaga kami ng idea or walang idea si Camillians kung ano nga ba paano magsisimula. Grant proposal writing. Building a database of program needs, sponsors, outputs, outcome, and impact. We usually gather or list our benefactors, list our beneficiaries. Every time we will have an event, we always go back to the same process of listing the benefactors, listing the beneficiaries. And keeping donors engaged and motivated in supporting your mission. A lot of our benefactors are so much directly attached to the priests who are working in our mission. But the problem is, when they are transferred, also the donors are transferring and the mission is left behind. Sustaining missions to serve is hard, and it's even more challenging today. Your staff get caught up with too much to do, not knowing where or how to start, chasing short-term goals or sacrificing your long-term vision. We hear you. We are here for you. We are Spring Rain Global. As a social enterprise, Spring Ring Global aims to coach philanthropic development organizations, faith-based organizations, nonprofits, enterprises, individuals in Asia, Africa, and beyond towards sustainability. Through our international team of highly experienced professionals for development, philanthropic, and financial planning sectors, we help our clients network and raise funds, supporters, and other resources necessary to continue serving communities. We build capacity. We empower human capital. Doon, mas nahasa, mas na-improve, mas na-enhance yung capabilities ng Camillians na magkaroon ng mga fundraising strategies. Hindi lang yung usual na naghihintay ng donation. Merong tinatawag na uh, donor care na hindi lang kami nag ask ng donation, but we include, include them in our mission. We put systems in place. With the new financial system given by SRG, our PDO has learned to put things into order, the finances. 
and at the same time, we are more efficient in spending the resources available for all the programs that we have. Spring Rain Global anchors our services on the six-pillar capacitation model, a propriety systematic framework to empower organizations holistically and effectively towards sustainability. In the last 15 years, we have prided ourselves in working with community-based organizations who respond to the most urgent needs in our communities. We bridged hopes, helped our clients reach new heights, and generate roadmaps where visions come alive. But we are painfully aware that there are still millions who will benefit from stronger, more sustainable missions. At Spring Rain Global, we are determined to work with organizations and individuals to help them realize their roadmaps with confidence and skill. Spring Rain Global is eager to help you contribute to sustainable development through your mission. In SRG, our work goes beyond making organizations mission ready. Introducing the Ecosystem of Good. Spring Rain Global facilitates linkages, connecting development organizations to one another, and program implementers to the private sector, philanthropy networks, and the government. With this, our ecosystem has been the best arena for funders, grant-making organizations, or donor networks to channel resources. And together, with our philanthropic development offices, we accelerate solutions to society's most intractable challenges. The ecosystem of wood is really flourishing in our video. That I felt that I'm not working alone. That people are sharing, contributing their own expertise, their own resources, even their own benefactors. They are giving what they can for the common mission whatever entrusted to us work with us let us achieve missions together spring rain global celebrating 15 years of nurturing a stronger ecosystem of good A PDO is a philanthropic development office we consider as the basic unit of the ecosystem where we professionalize the direct linkage between donors and beneficiaries. It will institutionalize and create transparency, good stewardship of resources, monitor impact of their programs, create advocacy impact so that in the holistic part of it, it's not just only about the money, but it's also the stewardship of the utilization of this money that is supporting the mission of these charities. We are also trying to build an ecosystem of different philanthropic development offices because it is only in the ecosystem that we will be able to sustain our growth together. We see that this PDO thing, this whole ecosystem, social commerce and crypto philanthropy is the best way forward towards sustainability. Not only for the foundation itself, but also for the beneficiaries who eventually be the ones to receive whatever benefits that the foundation will be receiving. And of course, ultimately the other PDOs also all over the country. It has helped us to identify our funding needs, especially for the sick, with the help and guidance that they are giving our minimized, more efficient and systematic. They have been doing their best to assist us and to work from where we are so that we could truly function as such. One thing that Spring Rain was able to help us and has been going on until now is really connecting a lot of people, and not only here in the Philippines, but also in abroad. They have given us the right mindset, the skill set, and the tool set that we need in order to establish our office and to raise funds for our apostolate in education. It was very chaotic, 
before spring rain we were just scrambling and trying to figure things out where spring rain came and gave us the technology on how to run it properly we had departments roles and it was an organized machine where it's just like a business or any entity that it would function on its own even if one person's not there or the president is not there the foundation is constantly moving and functioning for the new PDOs the resources that you have will be maximized because of the system that Spring Rain will teach you and will share with you. The system has helped us how to pool resources, how to manage the fund, how also to manage our advocacies, our activities and program, how to sustain it and plans are being done for its continuity. I would like to invite you to engage with Spring Rain and help the people, your community, more with the system. Without the system, it will block succession. If you have the right skillful people without the system, then it cannot sustain long enough. If you have a system without the right people, then you miss the opportunity of maximizing the whole process. There's a lot of donor fatigue that is happening right now. And it's not because they don't want to give. It's about being annoyed by the manner of asking. It's actually the manner of the way we are communicating with the donor. The perennial problem that we have been encountering is the problem of sustainability. Partly because we have a nourished and nurtured relationships with our different benefactors all these years. That's when I see the great potential that once we are able to connect and to nurture our relationship with our donors and eventually make their donation, make their giving more of a happy experience, then probably things will be better so that it doesn't become a linear type of relationship, but it becomes a mutual kind of relationship. When the donor gives, he is happy. He is happy because he was able to give. And of course, he is happy that he is being regularly updated by the happenings and the updates of the foundation itself. We are able to see more people who are really not only business driven, but deep inside they want to make their businesses even more meaningful. They are finding meaning on giving impact to the lives of others. It ignites more our desire to do mission, to expand our mission. We are very excited to continue doing it and to be more serious about it. It takes a way to really study them and learn about how these donors need to get motivated, get involved, so that the fatigue that is happening will turn into a transformation of partnership, love, generosity, and it will create a very wonderful family in the world of philanthropy. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spring Rain Global's fourth quarter fundraising campaign. Please make yourselves comfortable wherever you are right now and let us enjoy tonight's program. Before we begin, we would like to share a few reminders. Put your microphone on mute to avoid unnecessary noise. Edit your Zoom name display using this format. Organization's name dash your name. For example, SRG dash Nicole. Please stay with us until the end of the program. We would love to have you around as we unfold another year end fundraising campaign. And lastly, please take a selfie, upload it in your social media account, and use this hashtag hashtag SRG. Empower Change, 100 Days of Giving, and enjoy the show. To officially start, let us now have the opening song followed by the Spring Rain Global Prayer.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spring Rain Global Prayer Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for the opportunity to be called in this noble endeavor of serving people and organizations through our thrust for a deeper love for humanity and stewardship of our giftedness. As we respond to this ministry each day, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit, that your wisdom may enlighten us, that your strength may remind us to stay focused in our purpose and calling, that your light be our guide at all times, and that your love be in our hearts. We know that the journey may not always be easy, but we firmly believe and hold on to your promise that you will be with us both in our challenges and victories as we bring love and unity to your people in service for others. We continue to pray that as we grow the mission and purpose of our Spring Rain Global Family, we may be sustained by your grace, ready to open the path for others, so that your blessings and divine providence may completely flow to each and every one of us. May we always stay in your grace, now and forever. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now play the national anthems of the Philippines, USA, and Singapore to signify the countries where Spring Rain Global is registered and operating. Alam ng puso sa dibdiboy buhay Lupang hindi lang tuyan ka ng magiting Sa pantulubig di ka pasisiting Sa dagat at utong sa simoy At sa langit mong bukaw May nilag ang tuna at awit sa Maglayang minamahal Ang isap ng watawag mo'y tago May nanaginuling ang bituin at araw niya kailan ang pwede madidilig Lupa ng araw ng buwan at ipansinta buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na pag may mga ati ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright star through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets red glared The box bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Mari kita rakyat Singapura sama-sama menuju bahagia cita-cita kita yang mulia berjaya Singapura marilah kita bersatu Dengan semangat yang baru, semua kita berseru 
Majulah Singapura, majulah Singapura, marilah kita bersatu dengan semangat yang baru, semua kita berseru. Majulah Singapura, majulah Singapura. Good evening, everyone. We are now live via Facebook. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope we are all excited for another opportunity in spreading positivity and impact. If you are, can you please type in a yes in the chat box or give us a thumbs up or a heart reaction. We would like to acknowledge the presence of our esteemed philanthropic development offices, directors, and team present, SRG advisory board members present, the president and officers of the SRG PDO ecosystem of good, the Spring Ring Global team, and the rest of all the guests joining us from different parts of the Philippines and the globe who are here with us via Zoom and Facebook Live. To give us the opening remarks and the rationale of this campaign, may I now call the founder and president of Spring Rain Global Foundation and the founder, president, and CEO of Spring Rain Global Consultancy. Let us all welcome Dr. Glenda Miro Antonio. And good evening, good morning, good afternoon. A warm welcome to each and everyone watching across the globe as we gather tonight to launch our much anticipated fundraising campaign with the theme Empower Change 100 Days of Giving for a Brighter Tomorrow. As each year passes, we know that in Spring Rain Global, we are not just raising funds, but we are also igniting a movement that embodies the essential elements on the advocacy, fundraising, and solidarity as the forefront of our purpose. Each of these pillars play a crucial role in our mission to create lasting change in our communities and beyond. Advocacy is at the heart of our campaign as always. We are here to amplify the voices of those who need it most, to champion the causes that truly matter to us, and to raise awareness about the pressing issues facing our world today. Through our collective efforts, we will shine a light on the challenges that many face and inspire action that leads to meaningful solutions. Fundraising is the lifeblood of our initiatives. Over the next 100 days, we invite you to join us and make a tangible impact. Every contribution will go directly towards supporting our various programs and projects that will uplift communities and empower individuals. Together, we can turn our generosity into a powerful force for good. Solidarity is the spirit that unites us all. In a world that often feels divided, we stand together as one community committed to making a difference. Our campaign is a testament to the strength of collaboration and the belief that when we come together, we can achieve extraordinary things. Let us support one another. Let us share our stories. Let us inspire others to join in this noble undertaking. I am also very excited to share to you that throughout this campaign, it's going to be a date every Saturday at 8 p.m. We will have participating philanthropic development offices who will showcase their initiatives every Saturday evening. Their presentations will highlight the incredible work being done in, the, in our communities and the impact of the support that you can do for them. 
Together, we will witness the change that we are creating and the lives that we are touching, especially to the various advocacies and initiatives of our different philanthropic development offices in the SRG ecosystem. This year, we are also proud to highlight our participation in the Race to Net Zero, supporting the European Chamber as the official UN accelerator. As we strive for a sustainable future, together with ECCP, we recognize that our actions today will shape the world of tomorrow. Let us continue to be the change makers who lead by example. Let us foster a culture of sustainability and responsibility. So I'd like to welcome you to the kickoff of our campaign. And as we join this 100 day journey, let us commit to creating a habit of giving, not just during the campaign, but eventually let it be part as a way of life. We call upon each of you to support and give generously as one ecosystem of good. Together, we can make this world a better place for all, ensuring that all our collective efforts will leave a lasting legacy for the generations to come. Thank you so much for being here. And in, in behalf of the entire Spring Rain Global family, we are very, very happy to once again launch our SRG last quarter fundraising campaign. For all your support and for, for believing in the power of change, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you so much. Let us empower change with one another and let us make this 100 days truly a transformative and a remarkable experience to everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Glenda. To ignite and inspire all of us in the ecosystem, may I call the president of the SRGPDO ecosystem, Father Orvin Gonzaga CP. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Father. Okay. Good. Good evening. Good morning, or wherever you are. This uh, in this moment where we uh, launch this uh, one hundred days of empower change. As I celebrated the mass this uh evening, it was Bartimaeus crying out. Lord, Son of David, have pity on me. It was a cry. A cry of the one who needs. And those people surrounding Jesus are trying to block this cry of Bartimaeus. But because of his courage, he cried out the more. And I believe this is one of the things that we have to do when we empower change, it is to magnify the voices of those who are marginalized. To be the voice of those who are unheard, those who are abandoned, those who are lost, those who are least. As part of the ecosystem, we should be amplifying not silencing these voices that is crying. And in our event, in our world today, we know that the earth is crying. That's why we have climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity, a call for an ecosystem that would respond to this cry. And this cry of the earth, the mostly affected are the poor. That's why we also have this cry of the poor. And for Jesus Christ, it is to listen and to ask what is really needed in time. For Bartimaeus, 
he would say, I want to see. And he was empowered to see and follow Jesus in his journey. I believe as PDOs, those working for the common good, for this ecosystem of good, we have to listen very well to the cry of the poor, to the cry of the earth, and magnify and be instrument as well to respond to this cries. So may these hundred days be meaningful, purposeful, in a way of giving, because we know we are responding to the cry of the earth, to the cry of the poor, in a way that Jesus would respond to those cries. We ourselves have been crying, and others had heard and somehow responded. May we be instruments of this cry, of this prayer of our brothers and sisters. As we continue with this program, we listen to our facilitators, to our speakers, now, on how can we magnify the cry of the poor in as much as magnify and be one and united in responding to this call. We cannot simply do it alone. Even Jesus has to find apostles, disciples to do the mission. May we unite for a brighter future as we empower change in this endeavor. So thank you and good evening. Thank you, Father Orvin. Climate change is a concern everyone has to focus, especially with what is happening in the recent typhoon, which we experienced, especially in the Bicol region. This is all the more accelerated to do initiatives to address, clim address climate change. Spring Rain Global is supporting the Race to Zero campaign initiated by the United Nations only accelerator in the Philippines, the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. We are honored to have with us tonight and also one of our members in the ecosystem from Reach Out and Feed Philippines, the campaign manager of the Race to Zero Philippines. Let us all welcome Ms. Don Cabigon to share about the Race to Zero. Welcome to the first Race to Zero in the Philippines Summit, organized by the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. We are brought together by our shared commitment to driving meaningful climate action. There is no alternative to climate action. We can only address the challenges we face by climate change together as we all call this planet our home. For those who are not familiar with Race to Zero, this is the largest campaign rallying cities, business and investors, civil society leaders to halt global emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. Yeah, well, th this is a very important event because this is the first step to actually bringing stakeholders together. We're working on a collective action so that we can move faster as far as addressing the challenges of climate change in the Philippines is concerned. What we expect for the next coming years is that the commitment from not just private sectors and organizations and commitment for, uh, from the government to work all together towards the same goal. And I was also very pleased that most of my colleagues from the Race to Zero Global team uh, joining from New York, um, all the way from Europe and Cairo, uh, they were able to support us. The Race to Zero is really all about mobilizing non-state actors, which includes businesses, academe, healthcare institutions, and the non-profit sector, to all come together in order to achieve our goals. And ASSIST will uh, hope to and will work towards being a key driver towards achieving this goal. So in agriculture, there are many best practices which we can share and proudly contribute to winning the race to Nedzira. 
uh, our members are the experts, the scientists, the professors, uh, those who are running the LGU. Those are the kinds of members that we have. And this one, we would like to push to them because they're the implementers on the ground. Philippines is always on the back end. I'm really happy to hear that we're already getting there. Our collaborative uh, situation is getting better and we have good people that really understand what uh, this is all about. And that would be a great uh, impact to the Philippines. We're proudly in the race to zero. Implementing a healthier, safer, and more equitable world. The science could not be clearer. We need to race to zero today. Join us in taking stock of progress in climate action. Estamos en una carrera para llegar a cero. A credible and demonstrable way to have emissions by 2030. Join us in the pivot of publicly tracking our commitments and urging government actions. We stand alongside with ECCP, Spring Rain Global, and Assist, and people all over the world who are proudly and boldly racing to zero and an equitable world. We know that there are a lot of initiatives on the race, but unfortunately, if we work in silos, we will not be solving the problem. There are still a lot of gaps that would have to be addressed moving forward. And Spring Rain Global supports this endeavor because as a catalyst and an ecosystem builder, we want to enable different sectors in society to come together and convene so that we will be able to address the gaps of what needs to be done. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone. This has been a huge um, opportunity for us to share the roadmap of Race to Zero, but it has not been easy as well. But we will now really do the real work, and that is to collaborate and to coordinate with each other and to finally implement the five P's of the Race to Zero. Race to Zero! Ready, set, go! Miss Dawn's internet connection is unstable. Let us just wait for a few minutes. Miss Dawn, can you hear me? Hi, Nicole. Can you hear me? My yes, internet. Paul. Table. I can hear you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I think I can open my video for a while just so you can see me, but I think I need to turn it off um, so that I could um, deliver the rest of my message. So um, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. I am actually in uh, inside a military camp here in Zambales because we had a tree planting activity this morning with the Naval Special Operations Command. And I had to deliver a very short message on the significance of tree planting. Um, I think you've all seen the high video highlights of the Race to Zero that happened last October 10. And I am very, very thankful to the SRG community, all the PDOs that were there. Um, I can really tell you that um, it has not been easy to pull that off because of back-to-back -back trips um, that I have. Because I wear multiple hats, I, I also handle the international trade fairs for ECCP. So I do travel a lot and, over, and I'm overseas quite a, quite a bit. Um, but seeing the PDOs there... Um, really is a way to calm me, <laughs> um, to be honest. Uh, 
uh, even if uh, there were a lot of uh, pressure during that day. Um, I think I wanted to, um, what I wanted to um, share with you tonight are some insights that I got from just back-to-back -back events that I've had um, after the Race to Zero Summit. Um, of course, you already know perhaps the basics of the Race to Zero. We have shared it quite a few times in the several times that I have been invited to speak in an SRG event, as well as for those who are in the summit. Um, but today, I'd like to show uh, to share with you three points that I learned from a recent event that I attended in Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam. Um, so just to give you a, a bit of a background, I am currently um, handling two major campaigns. So one is one is the Race to Zero, which is the UN back uh, campaign um, by the UN Climate Change High Level Champions. And second is I was also tasked by ECCP to help in uh, leading the Green Economy Program for the Philippines. And this is a program funded by um, the, e the European delegation. So basically EU has um, committed an, an investment of um, 10 billion euros to Asia Pacific countries. And of of which the, of this of this ten billion euros, four point two billion has been deployed already, and of which sixty million euros is committed to the Philippines until twenty twenty seven. So that is another campaign that I am I am helping out, and in fact, this November twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty eight. We have a launch of which uh, we have some delegations coming from Brussels um, in order to discuss high level issues in terms of transitioning the Philippines into a green economy. Um, however, um, as I was attending these back to back events and meetings, and I was actually in Ho Chi Minh last uh, week, um, I think in a uh, second day of our, our stay there, Christine hit, uh, Typhoon Christine hit the Philippines and I was uh, really brokenhearted to see all the photos, especially the one in Bicol. Um, I'm not sure if Father Eric is here, but I, I really felt for our communities there. And in fact, what, um, um, what I mean, what's speaking into my heart is that if only we have done our part in advance, then um, we could have avoided such catastrophes. Um, I'm sure you are aware that flooding is caused by improper solid waste management. And if only our A9003 has been implemented properly, then we could have lessened the damages caused by the flooding um, and many other things. And so I wanted to impart to the SRG community that um, the cost of inaction now will cause us more devastation in the future. And I think that is the mindset that we all need to have. And so there are three points that I want you to understand um, in order for us to make this um, race to zero very strategic. So right now, I know that a lot of you, all the ongoing efforts in relief, and that is really good. Um, however, I felt that 90% of that task should have been the responsibility of our government and the local government units. Um, but I think that what's happened, and we don't want to dwell in it, and that is why non-state actors, the civil society, faith-based organizations, we're all united to be able to bring the necessary help to the communities, which is good. But I think frameworks, and when we say regulatory frameworks, these are policies that may already be in place. Uh, for example, I mentioned RA9003, which is our Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. It has been, it's a regulatory act already, but it has not been implemented because it doesn't have the buy-in of the local government units and also the businesses. And so this is something that we wanted to solve immediately. Uh, we have no time to start from zero because 
um, we need something that is scalable. And so now it brings me to my second point, which is pilot projects. Um, these are not my own insights, okay? These are insights that I got from the European ambassador to APAC when he delivered his message in Ho Chi Minh last week, um, which are three points that he thinks would accelerate the transition of Philippines into a green economy. When you say it's a green economy, it means that we no longer consume from nature, but resources are being reused and reused. So it, it now becomes a circular economy. So it means that you don't have waste, but whatever we consume, it goes back to earth and then it gets um, um we there are no there are less waste in the landfills. Um that is the overall target. Um now after regulatory are pilot projects, and that is what um I think Glenda mentioned earlier that the funds that we are trying to raise here will go to pilot projects and these pilot projects has demonstrated impact already. So we are not gonna implement a project that is um, do we, in the trial and error stage. We don't have time for that. So right now we are looking at the race to zero waste, which is really it with which really hinges on RA9003. So whatever are the whatever are the the, the key components of that law, it is simply to advocate the immediate implementation and proper implementation of that law. And I can readily share that concept paper to all of you so you can study it because the current concept paper is based on an implementation in Laguna. So why Laguna? Because that is our biggest hub for manufacturing facilities. And so most of the polluters are there. I think about 745 manufacturing facilities. And it targets to be implemented in about 681 barangays in Laguna. Um, that's one. And then second is we would like to support the mangrove restoration. Um, if uh, some of you would know uh, our cement manufacturers, cement is one of the top polluters all over the world. Um, by law, they are required to sequester their carbon. And one of the main ways that they are doing that right, right now is into mangrove restoration because mangroves has the capacity uh, to really absorb and be a, a carbon sink. So now the Race to Zero community just launched a financial roadmap. It is already a published research and our lead for oceans, his name is Ignace, who's based in New York, shared the, this paper to me. And it basically uh, gives a roadmap for civil society and for nonprofits like us to come together to break the silos. Because right now, mangrove restorations are just happening like um, very uh, fragmented, right? So Palawan, meron sa, um, so mangroves are mostly in Malawan in the Barm region, um, but there's no, but nobody is monitoring it. But this roadmap, I'm excited about it, is because um, um, using a satellite image, uh, they have identified that there's a total of 1.5 million hectares of mangroves all over the world, and um, you know how many percent belongs to the Philippines? 16 percent of that. 250,000 hectares of the 1.5 million hectares all over the world is concentrated in the Philippines. In fact, when you show the world the, the, the heat map of these mangroves, you can see the Philippines is all green. It means we are all surrounded by it. And um, I think this is a big opportunity for us to help the global community because our mangroves will have the capacity to absorb the carbon coming from other countries. Now, what is the total funds that the Race to Zero is trying to raise to restore all these 1.5 million hectares? 4 billion US dollars starting this year up to 2030. We have six years to raise that 4 billion US dollars. The mangrove coverage is in the Philippines. And so we have access to 16% of that funding that belongs to the Philippines. And so this is a, a project that I'm really excited for us to come together to pilot. In fact, I had an initial meeting already with 
Bellevue Bohol. Bohol has some concentrated mangrove um, areas and um, also Palawan is one. Um, Palawan, I've seen it again when they did the when they did the presentation in Ho Chi Minh. Um, that it is a very it's a location for a carbon capture, especially for the cement factories. So that's one. And then third is the um a master of disaster or MOD. This is an existing um project by one of our partners, Assist. So perhaps you've met them during the Race to Zero Summit. They have this board game that they made in different languages already. I think there's Cebuano, there's English, and um, it's localized. And it's basically a board game that kids can play, that can help them, um, that, that can educate them on the proper disaster resilience. And then to add to that, I was in Gamescom Asia the week after our summit. Gamescom Asia is where game developers all over Asia, they gather the brightest of the minds, um, this, you know, the, the genius guys who are developing the games. And I pitched the idea to them that I told them, you know what, I wanted to reach the youth and judging from my kids, they're always in their games. So how can I reach them within that, within that platform? And they said, Miss um, Don, the answer to that is gamified learning. So whatever concept you want us to bring into the kids, we can put it into the game and we can insert some information there. And I said, you know, how can we make it happen? And so uh, I was able to start some conversations within the game developers and uh, they are excited to play a role in this race because uh, I think whether we like it or not, the kids are really engaged in games. And if we want to reach, want this information to reach them, we need to be where they are. So that's one um, exciting development that I'd like to share with you. And then third, and the la my last point is on business innovation. So in Vietnam, they are all talking about creating platforms to encourage innovation and having this kind of event, physical events where we we are showcasing different technologies and and matching them with potential LGUs that can use these technologies in order to transition to net zero. These are the things that we need now. And then lastly, our dialogues. We should always be open to having dialogues, especially with different countries. And I think that's one thing that I like about SRG is that SRG is not just local in the Philippines. Um, Glenda, I believe you're in Amsterdam. <laughs> so I believe Glenda is in Amsterdam right now and she's building connections all over the world. And I think that's also one of the edge that I have that before I came in to lead the race to zero, I have just been traveling all over the world and really seeing what's happening outside of the Philippines. Like in Europe, the recycling facilities, you can see it portable in every single supermarket. It's like it's mainstream. So you just go there and if you have, an, you know, you have your plastic cups there, you just put it into the machine and then the machine gives you a ticket that gives you credits and it's as good as cash. I can go back to the supermarket and use this credit as cash. So Europe honestly is in the lead of this curve and um, I truly believe that that is why ECCP has been appointed as the sole accelerator here in the Philippines, because you can count on Europe to be able to introduce the technology and also the regulatory policies for us to be able to implement this technology. So I will end there. And um, I thank you so much for being patient with me. I hope that my internet has been stable, um, Nicole, all throughout my message. Yes. Cool. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. And um, if there are some Q&A later. I'd be happy to answer. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Dawn. This year's fourth quarter fundraising campaign is very unique as we are the lead collaborator of the Race to Zero Philippines together with the European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines as the lead accelerator. Addressing the challenge of climate change is crucial to ensure a sustainable future for all. 
Net Zero is a comprehensive approach in balancing greenhouse gas emissions and its removal from the atmosphere. Achieving the net zero goal is essential to mitigate the devastating impacts of climate change and create a world, a more resilient and equitable world. By leading this 5 million USD campaign, we can make significant strides in accelerating the transition to a sustainable net zero future. As a collaborator of this Net Zero campaign, Spring Green Global invites all the PDOs, ecosystem members, companies, financial institutions, educational institutions, healthcare providers, environment advocates, civil society, and the general public to be the first 40 champions to pledge 1.5 million in peso. This year's fourth quarter fundraising campaign will focus on these following advocacies. Climate change, education and awareness, race to zero campaign, SRG ecosystem disaster and climate fund, fund campaign, human capital development. This includes vocation and formation, skill set, upskilling, education and scholarship. Livelihood development, this includes solid waste management, social enterprise, and circular economy. Community health resilience, this includes clean water and sanitation, poverty alleviation, peace and order. Disaster preparedness, response, and rehabilitation, sustainable transportation and green technology solutions, climate resilient housing and infrastructure, renewable energy and reforestation conservation initiatives. Tonight's highlight advocacy is climate change, education and awareness, race to zero campaign, SRG ecosystem disaster and climate fund campaign. Joining us for this year, fourth quarter fundraising campaign are Swiftly or Dalan Save Cebu, Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation, Magical Mission, Daughters of the Sacred Heart, Claritian Missionary Sisters, Bakita Canosa Foundation, Institute for Philippine Cooperative and Social Enterprise Development, Venrich Holdings, OPC, Oblate Apostles of the Two Hearts, Carmelite Missionaries, Passionist, European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines and Spring Rain Global Foundation. Joining us for tonight's advocacy are Swiftly or Dalan Save Cebu, Carmelite Missionaries, Passionist, Oblate Apostles of the Two Hearts, Daughters of the Sacred Heart, European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, and the Spring Rain Global Foundation. Spring Green Global supports the participating philanthropic development offices in advocating for a better and healed environment. We aim to raise funding for their programs that focus on preventing further damage to the environment, protecting the natural resources that God has entrusted to us, and eventually create a healthier place to live in. For the next part of our program, 
we will be hearing from tonight's panelists, the representatives of various stakeholder and participating organizations that support the advocacy on climate change education and awareness, Race to Zero campaign, SRG Ecosystem Disaster and Climate Fund campaign. May we call on Father Orvin Gonzaga, CP, PDO Director of the Passionist and the President of the SRG PDO Ecosystem. Father Gerald Borja, CM, Co-Founder and CEO of Spring Rain Global Foundation. Ms. Dawn Cabigon, Campaign Manager of the Race to Zero Philippines. Mr. Jose A.R. U. Bengzon III from Affinity Capital. Mr. Vincent Lim. SRG Director, Singapore. And Dr. Glenda is in transit right now to Italy and might not be able to join this panel discussion. And this panel discussion will be facilitated by Father Ricci Mercado, OSA. All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome again to Spring Rain's um, last quarter campaign, which is which uh I would say which has the theme of empower change, you know, 100 days of giving for a brighter tomorrow. Now, again, I would like to thank first of all to our panelists who are who are always ready and available to share their their wisdom, their experience. Uh, in in this um in this field this very important i would say not just project but really a project of life because it's as as what pope francis says as pope francis is very has has been very outspoken in terms of climate change calling climate change a road to death uh, and a structural sin that endangers everyone uh, because pope francis has seen you know countries that have been I would say uh, big proponents of destroying our the future of the world, the future of the next generation. That he has urged the world leaders to take action, and at the same time criticizing countries with the highest I would say fossil uh, fuel emissions for their role in the climate change. And that's why we, as members of the church and at the same time citizens of the society then we have a responsibility as well to take part in this fight against climate change. So to begin, before I begin ask, asking questions, um, I would like to invite everyone that if um, you have any other question, if you have questions, you can either uh, raise your hand or better type your questions in the chat box and I will try to accommodate your questions accordingly. I just want to make it clear that we only have about half an hour or maybe a little more uh, for the, for this panel discussion, all right? And then this will not be the first and the last, but they will, this will be the first of, of the many discussions that we might have, all right? So he, here's the first question. I know Dr. Aglenda is not yet here, but I want to ask um, um, Father Orven, Father Gerald, who are part of the side of the Spring Rain uh, Global and the Spring Rain Foundation. Um, I want to ask you, um, after hearing from Dr. Glenda, uh, the, the, the need for us to participate, those who are part of the ecosystem for Spring Rain, you know, um, how does this campaign now align with, with, with the mission and the vision of Spring Rain Global? Um, Especially, it is crafted towards participating in a much bigger campaign, which is Race to Zero. Now, how what this is? How do we align as as Spring Rain part members of the Spring Rain ecosystem? How do we align? I mean, how does this align to by participating in the Race to Zero campaign? Now, how does this align um, to to our vision, our mission? as Spring Rain Global. Um, uh, yeah, Father, the floor? Yes. yeah, Father, I, I'm, apologies. I don't know what, what's, what's happening with my video, but I cannot be seen, although oh. I already opened my video. 
Um, but but anyway, uh, I think from the perspective of of a PDO, uh, with most membership coming from religious organizations like the Catholic Church, uh, definitely uh, at least as far as the official teaching is concerned of the Catholic Church, at least I think from from how I see it, I think it's very much aligned because of our uh, commitment through the document uh, that was recently written by Pope Francis, which is Laudato Si. I think if there is anything. Uh, the Laudato Si, or what we're doing with the net Race to Net Zero, is just not nothing but an operationalization on what uh, our Pope wants all of us as a church to, to do. Uh, the second thing is maybe from, from a maybe humanitarian or maybe practical perspective, because uh, I think whether we like it or, or not, we just only have one home. Uh, even without Laudato Si, I think from that perspective alone that we become we, we belong to the same human race and we live in a common uh, house called Earth or uh, the universe, I think we have no choice but but to really align uh, all our organizations, not only SRG, but also all the different members of the uh, SRG ecosystem to align uh, ourselves to that sp very specific advocacy. Uh, in fact, we call it, and uh, it has been called long time ago, that it is already an, a climate emergency. So we just have to act now and it has to be now and it has to be fast, and it has to be huge, ambitious. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father Gerald. Um, Father Orvin, the, as, as the president of the uh, PDO, uh, the, the PDO, uh, the association, the PDO groups, um, yeah, how, how you yeah, know, on the part, that was part of the ad administration side, but now on the part of those who are a lot of times beneficiaries you know how how does this uh, how do we align as well not just the vision of spring rain but also the individual pdos in terms of you know um um the, this campaign yeah the most of oh, good good evening thank you father richie <laughs> and uh, all the panelists here it is the pdos are mostly connected with the people in the ground who are most affected by this climate crisis. And this is aligning to a bigger picture that what they are asking is not simply being given as beneficiaries, but how can they be agents and actors no, in this uh, movement as regards to climate change. We don't want also the uh, the IPs, no, those in the on the ground that just simply waiting what is given to them. No. The PDOs are preparing that they are active uh, movers of this. They're the ones living in the mountains who are mostly affected. They are the ones who has to to uh, protect no the trees, the uh, the nature, no, it's in their hands. Whereas the our brothers and sisters who might be in uh, <clears throat> in organizing, no, this net to zero is to be able to have that connection. No? And the PDOs, as uh, Doc Glenda would say, we have to see the gaps that it's not uh, uh, truncated. It has to be connected that what we are doing is really the cry that is happening in the ground. So as the response that we are doing, you know, the projects and the programs are really trying to address what is really happening to those who are most affected by this climate uh, crisis that we have. So I believe that the PDOs who are on the ground can really see what's happening. And uh, I think the SRG ecosystem has something to contribute in this uh, uh, net to zero campaign. Thank you, thank you very much, Father Orban, Father, Father Gerald. Yes, Father, this is Pepito Bengson. Can I add yes. to what Father Absolutely. Orban is saying? Can I, can I, can I be heard? Sure, sure. Absolutely, we can hear you clearly. Okay, good. Um, Doctor Glenda asked me to speak for in behalf of Spring Rain also, and the question was, how is Spring Rain Global? being able to tie up with ECCP's campaign for this race to zero. One of the 
seven pillars of Spring Rain Global is environment, environment development, and environment protection. So this is definitely in line with ECC's, ECCP's campaign of race to zero or waste to zero. Let me take it a step further. And let me say that it's not only waste to zero, but converting the waste into a productive matter. We can convert that waste into fertilizer or other forms that form the raw materials for planting or developing or growing plants or vegetables. Mm -hmm. And that's how I see Spring Rain Global's tie up with ECCP in its, in its uh, campaign among, again, seven pillars of growth of SRG, environment is top of the list. It's very important to know that environment affects every aspect of today's world. Pollution, growth. Uh, in fact, one of the projects that we have is uh, what we call feedback program. Uh, this is a project with my Rotary Club where we convert right, the, the waste uh, and transform it into fertilizer to form and to grow plants and vegetables. And after three months, the community is able to exchange their produce and sell the remains. So I, I see this as a good uh, uh, partnership between SRG and ECCP. And as I always tell Dr. Glenda, since I love acronyms, I remember SRG to mean sustainable, resilient growth. Spring Rain Global represents a sustainable, resilient growth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Peps. Uh, that was that was a wonderful, um, I would say, reminder to us. You know that, uh, especially for us who are part of members of religious communities. That, as what Father Orvin said, it's not just about being beneficiaries. And uh, you added a very important component there, where there has to be a transformative element. You now that it's we're no longer just beneficiaries, but at the same time we convert ourselves, we transform ourselves into, into agents of hope, agents of change as well. You know? and, and I believe you know, as, as, um, as Vincent on the side of, of benefactors as well as being, I would say, deeply embedded into the spring rain system, the global system, aside from being a generous benefactor, you know, I, I would say, Mr. Mr. Vincent Lee, my question is, coming from the other side, you know, not just pure, not not on the side of the beneficiaries, um, does this also lead you or benefactors at the same time to a transformative um, uh, element where it's not just about giving, but really there has there's also a component of transformation among yourselves, not because as what as what we were reminded earlier by Father Gerald, Father Gerald, that it's a climate emergency, not because it's an emergency, but really because something can be done, and there there there's a, there are a lot of things that can be done. So, how about on the side of the benefit? Yeah, well, on the part of the donor side, it's best interest that we donors also look for uh, outlets to be able to share their resources or what you call the corporate social responsibility side. They're looking mm -hmm. also for projects, if you will, or outlets to be able to share their resources. And we, we live in a world where people are supposed to unite and not only take time, but take action to create not only a lasting change, but a lasting transformation in the communities that we live and we serve. And the good thing about this, Father, if you will, if you permit me and beg your indulgence, it's not only transformation in the communities we serve, but who knows, even transformation in ourselves. Transformation in the way how we think and transformation of the way we work together and collaborate together. And that's how I see SRG and ECCP collaborating towards that goal of environmental protection. So it's not only 
a race to zero, but a race to zero plus more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Peps. Um, now again, Vincent, I'm gonna go, I wanna go back. From your <laughs> side, from your perspective, you know, what what do you think? You know, like is is this state of emergency in the minds of the benefactors as well? You know, that they are also deeply affected, you know, the of the urgency that this uh was it brings us. Definitely, definitely. Thanks, thanks everyone for sharing. Um the the corporates, the funders, the investors, uh, uh, especially in this part of the world, they are really concerned with what's going to happen in the world. Uh, that's why a lot of family offices, uh, corporates, they're coming into impact funding. Uh, SRG itself has also set up a impact fund for the purpose of all this, uh, funding really impactful projects. And, and we are actually very grateful um, to Dawn uh, and ECCP for coming uh, with this race to net zero and coming and joining and sort of allowing SRG to be part of it. Uh, we set up the ecosystem of good a while back, right? And not knowing what this ecosystem of good is supposed to be. And this race to zero has given it a new meaning. Because I'm, I'm a zoologist by training and, and I studied ecosystem, right? If you understand what ecosystem is, it's really... Um, a natural environment where everything, living to non-living, plays a role. Right? That's what a healthy ecosystem is. And the Earth is, of course, the largest ecosystem. Of course, there are many, many small ecosystems within the Earth, but the Earth itself is it's a very large ecosystem. And we all have a part to play. Right? So for those who can contribute time, energy on the ground, to plant trees or to restore forests, they do that. Right? And for those who have the financial resources, um, we provide those resources. And so I think this, this collective action, as, as Father Oven has mentioned, is very important. Right? This is really the time where we there's a coming of minds, coming together of minds. Um, the funders, the benefactors, they have the money. Right? But where do they send the money to? <laughs> right? Um, the people on the ground, uh, the PDOs, um, the, the, the people who have championed the, 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 the climate action stuff, they know. They know. They're very close to the people. They're very close. They, they hear the cry of not just the people. They hear the cry of the planet, right? Um, and this is where the, the beauty of this collaboration works, right? And this is, this is where the synergy comes. Um, I wouldn't know how to save a, a mangrove, right? But there are people who are trained to do that. Um, I would know how to to save a particular species of animals, but there are people who know. I don't know how to do waste management. There are people who know, right? And that's where God is great, right? It's this 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 wisdom, this sharing of knowledge and wisdom coming together, um, in this ecosystem of good. It's 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 very powerful. And there's sort of an environmental justice. You know, the climate change always hits the, the lowest of income of communities, right? When they are the one that contribute the least, <laughs> right? Why is the person contributing the least to global emissions suffers the most, right? Where is this, this injustice, right? I think this, um, is, this is a time where I think a lot of, companies or benefactors who have amassed or accumulate wealth over the centuries uh, can, I'm going to say redeem themselves, <laughs> but put things in order. And that's their moral obligation, that ethical responsibility that they have to, to, to come together. Um, there is a global realization, um, not just for past deeds, but for the future generations because what's the point uh, of, of a company building, building, building and accumulating when the earth doesn't exist tomorrow, <laughs> right? Uh, there's no point. But of course, I don't want the benefactors to be doing this for selfish reasons, right? I don't want them to be doing this so that they can continue to accumulate more wealth. And that's also the other transformation that I hope would happen. 
right? The transformation of not just saving the earth, but also the realization that you are doing this not because of your own selfish uh, purpose, right? The years you just want to, oh, I, I want to make sure the earth is around so that I can accumulate more wealth. So I think I think that has to be a fine balance. Um, and that's where um, I come in on my side that, that while um, Dawn and the rest of the team is it's focused on activities, as actually focused on on um, rallying the support of, of the people on the ground. On our side, we are also helping um, people with the money to tell them, you're not doing this for yourself, right? You're not doing this because uh, you can create a better economy or making money off uh, saving the earth, right? You have to do this because you only have one earth. And that is the other side of the education and awareness that we are doing. So that there's alignment, right? That the, the, the purpose and the action um, and the values, I think that's what I want to say, the value system, it's, it's aligned. And, and this race to zero for me, is not just a race to zero waste, a race to um, zero carbon footprint, but for me, it's the race to zero poverty. Right. Um. That's what I I, I hope. So I, I love I love how Don Manchi explained to me why it's called race to zero and it's open ended. It's up to all of us to decide what we want to end. Right. It is not just to, not just about ending uh climate um uh, uh the increase in carbon, the increase in waste. But each of us have our own personal uh desire to reduce something or to make sure that we totally eradicate something. And uh, SRG and Ecosystem Good is here to eradicate poverty. Uh, and I think this race to, to zero for me is 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 the race to zero um, poverty. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See, uh, the brilliance of, the, of, of how we frame the campaign or how ECCP has framed the campaign race to zero is that, as you said, it's always open-ended. Maybe at this time the prior the need the immediate need is climate change. Yes. Yeah. You know? But again, as all these all these needs are always intertwined, interconnected to each other. You cannot talk about climate change with not with not without addressing the the the, the need to address poverty, the yeah. need to you know, a lot of these things, education. Well, thank you very much. Now, now that Don is back, um Don, Ms. Don, I have a very uh, also a simple question Sorry for you. That. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. You you mentioned earlier that okay, um, um, these, I would say the, the projects that you mentioned earlier, the the funds raised in this campaign will go to the projects that the pilot projects that are more viable, meaning that are really that have already clear planned, you know, planning. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna um, not just entertain, but again, we would prioritize projects that are more viable because of this emergency situation that we are in. Um, now, who? My question is, who who determines the priorities? Like, is it is it collaborate a collaborative effort between um, ECCP and Spring Rain? Or is it just is it a third uh, what's a third party agency that will determine what priorities? Because um, I just want I just want mm -hmm. the people to, who are here with us and those who will be reviewing the videos mm -hmm. uh, in, in the future, they would have yeah. an idea. You know, um, uh, how can they participate or like um, what is needed? Mm -hmm. Yes. So thanks for that, Father Ricci. The, the race to zero has uh, what we call um, sector breakthroughs. So these sector oh, breakthroughs nga, nga, ano, na, ano, are studied uh, by, by the UN Climate Change High Level. Um, Ms. Dawn, can you unmute yourself? Okay, sorry about that. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, Thank perfect. You. So, okay, um, so in terms of the priorities, the UN Climate Change High Level Champions has formed a group of experts. It's called the EPRG Expert uh, Peer Review Network. 
And uh, what they did is they identified the sectors that if you have a breakthrough in that sector, we will create an achievement in terms of accelerating our, our target to have emissions by 2030. So you need to understand the difference between the 2050 target, which is the Paris Agreement, and the 2030 target, which is to have emissions. So in layman's, we are looking at a 50% reduction on all scopes. So if I am an SME, for example, I own a, um, a, a construction firm, right? So my scopes one and scopes two are emissions that I can control. These are my utilities. These are the emissions from my fleet, the vehicles that I use for my business. The scope three, however, are the waste that comes out of my, my factory or my production facility that is passed on to my clients, but still indirectly my responsibility. So it's quite an ambitious project to be able to reduce by 50% the scopes among all those scopes one to three. So that's number one. Um, and that is why there is an urgency because now we're looking at the six year lead time for 2024, the target is 2030. And I can tell you that for the Philippines, we don't even have a target yet. We did not commit to a net zero target. And I know we're live, but this is public knowledge. For example, Meralco, as a power distribution company, do not commit to a net zero target because essentially because they are just a distribution, power distribution. So as long as the source of their energy is coming from coal, then it is not their problem, right? Because they distribute the power. Now, now the bigger picture here is that the source needs to be clean. And that is why there is now an advocacy for us to transition to clean energy. So in Bicol, Camarine Sur, they are badly hit by Typhoon Christine. But the good news is that there is a European investor and he was there in our race to zero summit last october 10 rune the ceo of of the copenhagen um group they're investing five billion us dollars for offshore wind in camarines Sur, and it will be on a grid and it will provide clean energy for the households in bicol so these are the kind of investments it's huge but it will have a big impact um, imagine if you now have clean energy in Bicol, we will not see another Typhoon Christine hitting them because now the air is clean and you know you were able to mitigate the potential effects of climate change. Um, and then I just wanted Father Ricci to go back to your other question on what is the significance of faith-based organizations in, in this movement. And I'd like to go back to my statement um, last uh, October 10 as well, ABS-CBN was there and they were asking me, Ms. Dawn, the topics that we discussed were all high level, but how can we bring it down to the grassroots? And I told them my short answer is faith-based organizations. And I will just read from my statement. I told them, these unsung heroes are vital in supporting climate change victims they provide relief, food care, and shelter when it matters most. So since they are always there to help the communities, their voices resonate within the communities, making them essential partners in this crucial race. To be honest, I have been doing my rounds. And for example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is one of our premium members in ECCP. And they are really investing millions in providing information campaign that their bottles are recyclable. If ever you, you empty a bottle of Coca-Cola, please make an effort to recycle it, right? But then if you go to grassroots community among the coastal communities, and I did it because I was there and I interviewed one passerby, I said, can you understand this? You know, in the bottle of Coca-Cola, it says they're recyclable. And the guy said, ma'am, um, busy po kasi kami magtinda. So... Wala po kaming time na i-pick up yan at i-recycle at ibigay po sa mga ngalakal. And so the intention is there by the businesses to make it happen. But 
the grassroots, they just don't listen to them. But I have hope that these communities will really listen to our to our priests, to the, our faith-based organizations, because they are the ones who are there when they need help, not really the businesses. The businesses are there to sell to them, right? And they are consumers. And so I think that we can really make a huge difference if we all collaborate and just have one message. And I think, Father Richie, this is the great thing about being in the race to zero. Honestly, this is not an ECCP-led campaign. This is led by the UN Climate Change High-Level Champions, of which we were appointed to be an accelerator in the Philippines and in APAC. Um, I think why Europe is helping us. Well, number one, they really did most of it, to be honest with you, and they know they are guilty of it because they are developed, right? And so, um, to be honest, um, Europe made a commitment. We're going to invest 10 billion euros in Asia because we know that a part of it is our fault. And in fact, um, right now, 4.2 billion has been deployed already. And the uh, Philippines is getting about 60, 60 million euros of it. And um, um, I'm, I'm quite um, blessed to be also a part of this, of this campaign. I just got in it for some reason. I don't know. Um, so I had a meeting with the team, the EU delegation and GI said, who are what the, the main campaign um, implementers in the Philippines. And this goes until 2027. And I think that what we need to know is there is an urgency because regulation is really coming for the business to the point that um, consumer will not buy goods if the product is at the expense of the ecology. Basically, it's as simple as that. So meaning companies who will not be a part of the race to zero, they will really lose their business eventually. They cannot renew their business permit. So now this is being imposed by multinational companies in the Philippines. There is called a sustainability report. But if you talk about multinational companies, you're only talking about a hundred, I don't know, um, I need to be corrected from it, but it's just a couple of hundred companies, right? But now it needs to be imposed down the line up until the SMEs, but it's going to be an investment. It's going to be an expensive report for them to come up with these, um, uh, to comply with these regulations. And so the civil society plays an important role because they are the ones who will make the change in demand. Right, because if there's no demand for the products that is polluting our country, then you know the businesses will definitely not produce them anymore. So this is how important this network is, this community is, because you guys, the communities, listens to you. So I'll okay. there for now. <laughs> well, thank you, and thank you also for the correction. You know for for my misunderstanding of uh, the source of this project, of this campaign. Now, my next question would be directed to Father Gerald, all right? As the, um, as the head of the, uh, uh, the foundation, the Spring Rain Global Foundation, um, how does the foundation um, come in and I would say, and, and what is the role of the foundation? You know, I would say, where does the foundation come in into this campaign? No, or is there a role for the basically? Is there a role for the for the foundation in in this? Especially, this question might come up from the PDOs who want to participate and yet will and lack and yet lack the resources. You know, and again, that that can be a question that you know because the desire is there. But the resources might not be there, right? Again, so, what is the role of the foundation here in in this campaign that we're doing? Yeah, uh, I think basically uh, I'm looking at now. We're looking at it as that the the foundation is basically would just be a complementer and a supporter to what SRG consultancy and SRG uh, family stands for or stand for. Uh, like for instance, I think at the heart of SRG. Uh, as what Ms. Glenda mentioned earlier, is that SRG is an ecosystem building. So which means uh, uh, it, that, that, that uh, the SRG Foundation should be should have also an, a DNA that, uh, that builds ecosystem, uh, not for the sake of building an ecosystem, 
but definitely for greater social and environmental impact. So in this case, I think uh, SRG Foundation has to make extra effort to ensure that the members of the SRG philanthropic development offices are in sync and in working together uh, mm -hmm. towards the achievement of race to net zero, or, or at least to making our acts together, ensuring that Mother Earth is taken care of. Uh, but, but I know uh, DNA, maybe for during the evolution, maybe DNA, I don't know how many millions or thousands of years, uh, how, 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 how DNA was developed to, to the kind of DNA that we have it right now. But what I'm saying right now is that uh, if it has to be in our DNA, it has to evolve also uh, within each one of us uh, as ecosystem, as individual organizations that the, that the, the DNA has to evolve within each organization and it has to evolve within each of us uh, uh, in our hearts and in our minds. So that's why I think uh, maybe beyond the race to net zero, I think is a race to changing our mindsets and hearts, which, yes. which is where uh, everything starts. Uh, I think uh, like, like for instance, uh, why I'm saying this, that everything has to start from a conviction. It has to start from the heart. Uh, because I think uh, right now, um, I know that there are organizations, uh, religious organizations and even dioceses who can actually afford to shift their fleets to, to using green technology. But it costs more. Uh, but but if if uh, dioceses and religious congregations would decide to make their fleet become hybrid or use hybrid or pure electric energy, it would cost them more. But I think, as as Miss uh, uh, Kabigon mentioned, that I think people listen to us. If we could just show to them that we are true to our commitment to Laudato Si and to making a difference in the life of 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 the, the of our environment and i think the best way forward for the church is to raise you know raise of the race of mind to changing our mindset and embrace uh the, the that's that specific advocacy that would cost us more but i think that would uh, help us a lot economically it would also create demand uh, why why are businessmen uh why are they here reluctant to 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 go green because there is less demand. But if the church would, would shift their minds and hearts and would invest and spend more uh, for greener technologies and et cetera, et cetera, then I think we can we have the capacity to create the demand. The other thing I think uh, I'd like to share also, like for instance, uh, I am an advocate of, of coming up with uh, building infrastructures that are made of alternative green technology. If the church would just commit to do that, that means less use of dependence on aircon. You could just imagine even the buildings, the churches, the convents, they are all made of glasses. And what are these glasses for other than aesthetics, other than, you know, copying uh, designs from uh, European uh, and American architects and engineers. But we all we also have our own engineers and architects uh, who, and, and our uh, the designs of our house, houses are designed actually for tropical countries. And we have that, but we, we haven't really used those uh, technologies that are already available uh, in the country long time ago. We just have to go back to all these things. And I think if the Catholic Church would just, you know, uh, do that. Uh, sorry, if I, I would like to, to add more. Uh, me, sure. I am, honestly, uh, if, if the Catholic Church is serious, I think if my dream, if I would just be given another chance to be a parish priest, I'll definitely build a bamboo, a, a church, a chapel made of bamboo, just to highlight, you know, my advocacy for greener use of greener technology. So, so the race to net zero is starts to racing, uh, to to a race to changing our minds, mindsets, framework, and hearts. Pag wala Thank you. Of those convictions, we can never move forward. Thank you, Father Gerald. That, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a strong statement. Not not in a negative way. Strong in a sense that it really pushes us to think further. You know that we 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 as members as leaders in the church for us for us who are ordained who are members of consecrated life, there has to be uh, I would say a strong conviction that that if we can start creating this demand, then maybe it would push also the other side, meaning the government, to. To, to cater to the, to this demand, which leads to my next question. 
it this could this is addressed to either Miss Dawn or Mr. Peps who have experience in dealing with governments or maybe other uh I mean mainly government. Um again yes I truly believe in what Father Gerald has said. However, if there are no if there's no conviction of the government, uh there are no laws legislated to protect the direction. Because again, yes, maybe there are certain decrees or law statutes that have been promulgated. And then in the next administration, it will just be abrogated. And then we will just go back again. Again, there has to be a sense, a, a, a certain sense of protection. What has your experience been in terms of relating to the government, the, you know, pushing the government leaders in terms of, hey, this is what the reality is. This is this is what the society needs. You know, um, have have there been any pushback or difficulties? Um, yeah, maybe I can answer first. Um, I think the the reason why there is a race to zero movement, which is being led by non-state actors, um, Father Ricci is for the fact that UN recognized that the governments in each country cannot do it alone. And it's not moving as fast as they want it to move. Because as you know, and we all very know, um, when you involve politics, uh, there's red tape as well. And it's quite hard to push this agenda forward, um, especially the elections are coming. Um, this is a pretty sensitive, you know, issue to discuss, but I believe that is why we are here. This is a non-state actor-led campaign. Um, of course, we recognize the government. In every single dialogue, we involve the government. In the last summit, we have a representative from the Climate Change um, Commission from DPI because they are the ones who are reviewing all the products that are being sold in, in the Philippines. Uh, we are involving trade associations as well, the Philippine food exporters, uh, because their packaging, we need to know that they are now um, aligning with the packaging in terms of the green and circular economy. Um, but to be honest with you, I would really want um, this to more be a non-state actor-led campaign. And I think we will move faster if it is kept that way. Uh, yeah, I pass it on to Sir Peps. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dawn. Uh, Sir Peps. Wow, again, while well, waiting for Sir Peps. Again, my, my point of asking that question was not that we, we give it off to, um, to the government, but really for me, there has to be a sense of protection because no matter how much what we do, as non-state actors, there's always a limit because there are laws that would provide structure and order in our society. Again, we, we, we're not uh, saying Yeah, that Father Ricci, I think, um, yeah, if I may, if I may add, um, policy work is a huge um, game changer. If um, all of the all of the advocacies that we are pushing for race to zero will be supported by a policy, because a policy is can can discipline, can provide structure, can provide incentives as well to encourage the businesses to um to be circular, right? Um, so I think in terms of the role of ECCP, we have twenty four more than twenty four advo um uh sector committees of which we always involve the departments of each government. We, we monthly have a luncheon meeting with department secretaries. The most recent one is with the uh, DepEd, and we would have with DOH. So very, very important. The dialogue with the government is, um, is very important, especially in terms of policy work. Uh, they should always be involved uh, from every step of the way and always listening to what are the challenges of the civil society, of the businesses, in order for this law to be implemented. Thank you. I agree, Don. Um, even in Singapore here, um, the business communities and the business networks have a very strong voice because uh, the business leaders in developed countries usually 
um, can influence the decision makers because the entire economy rests on the hands and the shoulders of these business leaders. So by rallying the support of the business communities, the family offices, uh, um, policies can be made because the, the voice is very loud when it comes to, to the business leaders, right? Um, because some of these politicians get their support from the business leaders anyway, right? Um, and, and this race to, to zero is both a ground up as well as a top down approach, right? I think I think Don and 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 ECCP is 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 going both ways, right? And there's so much the ground up efforts can do, uh, and that's why the partnerships, um, with faith based organizations that's that's also a very very loud voice there, right? And and for the benefactors who are the the business leaders and and this all these stakeholders come together in this. Ecosystem. Of course, the politicians make this makes the policy that accelerates um the adoption of, of green technologies, um, giving penalties if companies do not follow, right? I think all in all, this multiplier effect that we're all working towards uh is what what would make this uh campaign or probably this this race to zero a success. Um we have to start somewhere. Um there is no no perfect time, but we make perfect the time that's given to us. I think that's what's important, right? Um, we don't have the best of everything, but we make the best of everything, right? So I think that's what's happening now. Um, the groundwork approach by the faith based organizations, you know, whether it's the youths, whether it's indigenous people, whether they are the, the, the poor communities, they all have voices, right? And 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 if if the voice is loud enough, right, they will they will get the support of the companies, the corporates, and then the voice of the corporates would then be louder when it comes to, to the decision makers. I think that's how it will go. It's the multiply effect, but somebody has to start, and I'm, I'm so glad that uh, we're all part of this movement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. And lastly, before we end, before I ask you to give your own final uh, messages, I have a question for Father Orvin. Now that, uh, you know, there is this excitement, hope that, yes, the, the ones who have the resources are truly willing and, you know, willing to, to do the best that they can to hear the cry of those who are in the margins. Now, from your part, as the leader of the PDOs, who are the ones who hear the cry of the ones who are in the margins firsthand? Um, what is um, how how do you feel now? Especially now that you go back to your to your to the leaders of all the PDOs, you know, bringing this message that an assurance that there there is hope. You know, um, what what how do you feel now as as someone who is a representative of the uh, the PDOs, who are really the ones hearing the cry firsthand themselves. You know, does this bring you certain type of emotion or, you know? Thank you, Father Richie. Yeah. Of course, when uh, you hear people at the top level, you know, thinking also of what is happening in the ground, it gives not just hope, no, but joy that we are not doing it by ourselves. The concern is now becoming bigger, even for those seemingly unaffected no, by all of this. And uh, as uh, Don has mentioned, the European <clears throat> Chamber no, somehow as a, as a part really of what is happening. And by that, they are willing to give their share in order to, to assist no, those who are mostly affected. No. But in our part as the PPDO with the SRG, what we are really, the SRG is trying to help us is to capacitate us no, in order to do this efficiently on the ground. We've been doing this all years and we were not minding about the data, we don't mind uh, uh, 
about how to, to preserve the, the office in order to continue. You know? mm -hmm. the, the people in the ground would always work. You know? As much as support are there, you just continue. But with this scale, we need to be capacitated in order to see you know, for those who are at the at the top, I would say, who has the who has the fund would know also the impact of of these things that they are doing. So we on the ground is also doing our work you know, to, for us also, you no, know, to know that like for example, how many people already graduated we do not know because we are not so concerned about this uh, this data before. We are just happy that oh, they graduated and then they have their own lives. But uh, through SRG, we are being taught you know, in order to to see and also measure you know, the things that we are doing that has an impact to the people that that we serve. And uh, with this uh, ACCP, you no, know, with its net to zero, somehow it it will be enhanced you now. These things that the SRG has been preparing for every PTOs on the ground, so it can be enhanced and how it can work really. So the uh, foundation is also trying its best to capacitate every PDO so that this flow, this flow of support and implementation will be somehow seamless, hopefully, you know, so that the reporting and uh, the impact of what you're doing will be fast track. No, we will not be waiting for ages because uh, technology is already there and SRG is also helping us how to make use of this technology. So I believe that the uh, PPDOs like myself are really interested because we are really there on the ground and if it, it's real, it will be uh, uh, scaling up, no? replicated no? to those practices which are good, then uh, we are one with this uh, net to zero, race to zero campaign. For me, every, uh, like for example, maybe treat each, kahit na pakunti-kunti, but uh, at least there is already merong daan. Uh, merong daan na may nangyayari uh, on, on the ground. I believe that is uh... well, well, thank you, Father Orvin. Now, we have come to a point where even though we don't want this to end, but I think because of time constraints, we might have to uh, bid our goodbyes for now. Now, before we end, I would like to ask each panelist now to, just to give us, all of us, and the future viewers of this, um, uh, of this session, um, um, what's your final message, you know, um, your personal takeaway? Now that we truly, now that we have a, a clear idea or a clear vision that yeah, there's a bigger campaign and then the race to zero and then Spring Rain Global is participating on this on this bigger campaign. And then Spring Rain now, you know, connects all these, I mean, connects the participation, um, transform this participation into a collective effort, a collective transformation through the various PDOs. And then it's, it's a wonderful idea that yes, even though we think we're small, we may think that we may not have any value to the whole world, but yes, we, have, we will be making a big impact not for, for a better change. You know, not just for us, but for the next generation, for generations to come. So I would like to ask each panelist you know, to, to share with us your final message, your personal message to, to, to the viewers. Um, and I'll begin with um, Mr. Vincent Lee. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm going to have a few pointers. First, I think um, we need to know that we can all do our part. Right. Um, and how do we do our part? We have to, wherever you can, you engage at all levels, right? Wherever you are, you engage the person closest to you first. Right? Of course, yourself need to believe and immerse yourself in this. If you don't believe in this, there's no point for you to go and engage other people because you're going to be 
counterproductive. So you have to start from yourself, look at the man or woman in the mirror, tell yourself that you can do this as well, you can be part of the movement, and then you can influence the person next to you and continue to engage at all levels. Wherever you are, okay, where you are either at a CEO level, you engage at a CEO level, you're at a ground level, you engage your neighbor, right? If you are a youth, you engage through your social media, right? And if you are uh, into technology, you engage through technology, right? You create new technology, as uh, Father Jerry said. If you have resources, you share the resources. And if you cannot engage, then you empower. So that's where the benefits come. We empower at, with various initiatives, right? Where there's education, where there's capacity building, where there's through, like, like, like Dawn and Glenda traveling around the world just to, to really, really empower and engage different uh, stakeholders and communities. My parting message tonight would be, we cannot, this is, this is not my quote, but I'm borrowing it from someone. We cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that we can do. We can all do our part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. Now I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Dawn to share with us your, your, your message, your takeaway for us. Yeah. Thank you, Father Ichi. I think that since we are in, in the space of talking about raising funds um, for the Race to Zero and for the SRG community, I always go back to where I started with Reach Out and Feed Philippines, my, my own nonprofit, which started with 800 pesos. Because simply uh, that 800 pesos that came from my own pocket at the time or, or sometimes from the pocket of my husband to support our feeding programs weekly is now reaching six regions all over the world. And um, recently we, we had a grant from Sony from their Social Justice and Philanthropic Fund that is quite significant. And that is why I was able to pledge 500,000 or half a million back into this campaign out of that funding from Feed Philippines. And it all started when I decided that I needed to give 800 pesos to start a small feeding program in Tai Tai Rizal. And that is the mindset that we need to have here in whatever little that you have, just contribute. And you know, God will just provide for everything. You don't even need to question. If it's only 500 or 1,000 that I have right now, just put it in the full pool fund. And I really trust that the community, our leaders, Father Gerald, Father Orvin, and Glenda, they are in a capacity to really protect this funding and, to, and for us to have a good decision to put it where it matters most. And second is I always go back to the victims of climate change. And for me, we had this case in Feed Philippines. His name is JC. His skin and bones is actually 12 years old, but he only has the, the weight of a two-year-old boy. He is almost dying at the stage when we intervened. And do you know where he lives? He lives near a dump site, a landfill in Sitio Dump Site Antipolo, where all the scope three emissions of the businesses are filling in. And this hurts me most whenever I hear businesses that the scope three emissions, that's not our responsibility. And I was like, so who's responsible for JC? The air that he is breathing every day is making him this. And even if we feed him daily with the good nutrition, we can't intervene because his environment needs to change. And that is your fault. I wanted to tell them that, but I can't. Um, but I always go back to JC, that I need to be the voice of JC. And I am pleased to also inform you that um, I was given a presentation slot in the upcoming COP29. And uh, I just found it uh, last week. Uh, so I'm going to have a 45 minute presentation slot to basically talk about the engagement in the region. And it's also our, our chance to talk about SRG, our efforts, what are we doing now with UN listening to us. So this is um, my role here. Um, I know I'm just an ordinary person. I'm not smart at all. I'm just pretending to be smart. But I think that this is something that, uh, you know, a gift that God has given me and I just need to do what I can. So thank you so much for everyone and, and just give whatever you can. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to move forward and ask um, Father Gerald for your uh, message for us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
uh, me there are just two things the the race to net zero is i think a race to changing our mindsets and hearts it has to start from within and uh, and, and i mean if in you know, on certain terms most simple way and i think that's the best way the second one is i think in as much as we are simple we attempt to be as simple as we can to be as passionate and clear with our messaging i think we have to have some sophistication in terms of dealing with different kinds of people and partners um which i think is a different skill altogether skill set altogether and quite difficult to do i think we just have to be comfortable and if that means getting out of our comfort zones i think we just have to do that to be comfortable dealing with politicians even if we are we don't want to because they are necessary they are part of the puzzle to be comfortable talking with businessmen and pretend to be a businessman as well sometimes and to be good at business even if you are not only for the sake of you know influencing people and even in the grassroots level to be good at dealing with uh local politicians like the barangay council members so that they can come up with leg legislations from the level of of uh of village and barangay so i think uh for me uh, the grassroots the people we serve will always be there but i think for us especially for church people we need to be comfortable and get out of our comfort zones to have that sophistication somehow to be able to deal with businessmen politicians uh, uh and different uh the academia etc to be able to to push this agenda but i think at the heart should be a changed and converted heart to zero race to that zero thank you thank you father gerald now i'd like to um ask father orvin thank you father father Richie. and um, somehow we we are doing each videos are doing their best in a, in a little way or in a big way, but there is really a need for us to consolidate all our efforts to have an impact in uh, in the society. And uh, everything that we are doing connected to this net zero has its value. So in our case, we just uh, we are planning to have this uh, six thousand trees with the IPs. We have 57 communities scattered in uh, Soxar Gen and just giving 100 siblings for each uh, community would somehow come to 6,000. Know? Um, and some schools, we are partnering with some schools using the uh, the film of uh, Hans Florentino, A Thousand Forests, you know, for their awareness about the climate change. It's a very simple presentation of the film. and. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the high school students, some of them are crying, you know, and some of them realize that uh, it is really real. The warm and the heat that they experience is, is there, it cannot be denied. So wherever we are, you know, we have videos, we just have to do whatever resources that are in, that is upon our reach. The, uh, the last campaign that we are doing, especially with this typhoon, no? with Father Gerald and all, that uh, we have this tagline of We Care. And uh, for us, many are also responding no, to this. And hopefully we can consolidate all this through our foundation so that uh, our response in, for the victims will also have an, an, an impact. So together we will do, and uh, let us always feel that we are not alone in this we attach ourselves in an ecosystem of good where many partners are uh, with us. No? Don is there, Vincent, Bengzon, no? the foundation is there, and uh, somehow we are not alone in this uh, race to zero. So thank you very much. Thank you, Father Orvin. And last but not the least, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Peps, uh, Bengzon. If uh, let me see if you're still around, uh, uh, to give us your final message, a uh, parting message to us. Once, twice. Uh, anyway, well, I guess uh, uh, Mr. Peps is uh, is not uh, is not uh, with us at this time. Um, but again. Well, thank you. Thank you very much to all the panelists uh, uh, for, for your words of wisdom. 
words of hope, words of encouragement. Um, as I would say always, especially to, to um, my brothers in the missions in Peru, animo. I'm not talking about the animo as in La Salle, no? but it's, it's animar. No, be, be, you know, be, be inspired always. Continue doing it. And that, that's what we say, animo. No? Uh, and so, friends, I'd like to turn the floor back again to Nicole uh, for, to, for um, I mean, to, to, to I mean, say, for the next part of the program, whatever that might be. All right, Nicole, thank you. Thank you so much, Father Ricci, and to all our panelists. The call for care for the environment remains strong. We continue to encourage everyone to participate in this life-giving campaign for the benefit of our brothers and sisters who are in need and for the future of our younger generation. Spring Rain Global believes in the power of an ecosystem, the power of how the exponential impact of an ecosystem can amplify the voice of what we all are capable of doing one day at a time. As what Pope St. John Paul II said, the earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. Sadly, this loose sense of stewardship towards earth has finally taken its toll and day by day, we together with all inhabitants are suffering the devastating impacts. In the midst of all this crisis, it is with urgency that we need to adapt and implement the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. With this campaign's advocacy on environment aims to promote sustainable development. To meet the needs in this offer its harvest, except with faithful stewardship. Sadly, this loose sense of stewardship towards Earth has finally taken its toll and day by day, we together with all inhabitants are suffering the devastating impacts. In the midst of all this crisis, it is with urgency that we need to adapt and implement sustainable development. Sustainable development is to improve the quality of life for everyone on Earth without consuming all the natural resources beyond the environment's capacity to supply. Sustainable development provides the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. With this campaign's advocacy on environment aims to promote sustainable development to meet the needs in this present generation while improving the lives of the future generations. Our philanthropic development offices or PDOs have developed programs that impact climate change and food security through natural farming and organic agriculture, infrastructure, and community development, education, and scholarship. In addition to that, we also aim to implement the following in all our philanthropic development offices located across the globe. Rainwater harvesting, materials recovery facility for the recyclables, composting for all biodegradable wastes, renewable energy, 
Biodiversity Preservation on Land Marine Ecosystem and Biodiversity Preservation Environment Protection Programs like Reforestation Converting Vacant Spaces of the PDO Facilities into Food Gardens Grey Water Recycling and more As we are all stewards of this beautiful gift it takes all of us to make a lasting and definitive impact of our only planet. Time is of the essence and we need it. Your contribution can help us continue our efforts in saving the environment while capacitating poor communities through sustainable development. To support, visit As we start this campaign, we extend our sincere gratitude to the grassroots organizations that have come together for this campaign, as their contributions are essential for the success of the missions and programs related to our featured advocacies. We hope that this platform will encourage even more organizations and individuals to join us in our efforts, paving the way for a healed and better world for all. <clears throat> Here are the ways to support the campaign. Begin with small acts. Empower change through 100 days of giving. This initiative encourages individuals and organizations to engage in simple yet impactful actions that contribute to a greater cause. By committing to a daily act of generosity over the course of 100 days, participants can make a significant difference in supporting grassroots organizations dedicated to fostering a healed environment. Purchase Lazada vouchers. These donation vouchers will be available at the Spring Rain Global Lazada store. Donations raised will be posted weekly via Spring Rain Global's Facebook page. Take action by signing up for Empower Change through 100 days of giving. If you are an organization who is raising funds, you may register at the link shown on your screens. Donations can be sent through the donation portal shown on your screens or the organization or the bank accounts of the following organizations. Swiftly or Dalan Safe Cebu, Carmelite Missionaries, Passionist, Oblate Apostles of the Two Hearts, Daughters of the Sacred Heart, ECCP, and Spring Rain Global Foundation. Kindly note that all donations deposited directly into the particip participating organizations' bank accounts will be for their exclusive use, while donations received through the SRG Foundation will be distributed among all the participants. Today marks the first day of Spring Ring Global's fourth quarter fundraising campaign, Empower Change Through 100 Days of Giving, and the conclusion for the advocacy for the care for the environment. But donations for this advocacy are still welcome even after 100 days. Check out Spring Rain Global's Facebook page as we will be posting the donation portals for this campaign. There goes my heart beating Cause you are the reason I'm losing my sleep Please come back now There goes my mind racing And you are the reason That I'm still breathing I'm hopeless now I climb every mountain and swim every ocean just to be with you and fix what I've broken. Oh, cause I need you to see that you are 
Next week, we will introduce another important cause, which is human capital development. This includes vocation and formation, skill set, upskilling, education, and scholarship. Spring Rain Global, together with its philanthropic development offices, will continue to raise awareness, ignite generosity, and promote solidarity in the next days. We hope for your continued support for this life-giving campaign. To conclude tonight's program, may I call back Father Gerald Borja, CM, the CEO and co-founder of the Spring Rain Global Foundation. Thank you, Ms. Nicole. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm a bit ashamed this time and uncomfortable because I think I've been unusually talkative uh, during the conversation. But uh, let me just share with you maybe several things. Maybe a story to end this uh, short conversation. Um, one time I was still with the Vincentian Foundation. We were building then the bamboo houses uh, together with Hilti Company and uh, Hilti Foundation at the time. And then when they visited the project site in Bagong Silangan, I met the executives from Switzerland and they asked me. Uh, I was so surprised that that, that person asked me out of, uh, I don't know why he asked me, but it was a surprise because that was the first time that that we met. Uh, and then, but he asked me those questions. The first executive asked me, "Father, what keeps you awake in the middle of the night?" And then I was so surprised. I didn't know what to 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 how to answer. But I knew my 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 how to answer it. But I just didn't know how, in in a way that they would be able to understand uh, what keeps me awake in the middle of the night. Uh, but I think uh, looking back, I think he was just uh, checking uh, where my heart is, what 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 are my values, what are the things that I value, what are the important things in my life, and then uh, and then that's why yeah I was surprised. The other thing that that the the one executive asked me, Father, where did you become a priest? <laughs> and that surprised me all the more. But I said, yeah, again, I didn't know how to answer it, but I know the answer, but I didn't know know how to how he would be able to understand uh, my answer but i think what these two people were driving at is uh, maybe alignment of my heart to the things that i do uh, i think maybe maybe they just wanted to to make sure that uh, the things that i'm doing is a fruit of of what keeps me awake what drives me what you will see so so i think in in, in all these things that we are doing i know that uh the, the formation of an ecosystem 
would take maybe a little more time because like a DNA, I think it's it takes an evolution, a cycle for that to fully develop. The same is true with our ecosystem, the building of eco and our ecosystem. It will take time. But I think we are on the right track and I think we are we have started. And I'm excited and looking forward that uh, uh, we'll be able to finally make it as an ecosystem. Uh, as we say in Tagalog, konting panahon lang, konting tiyaga lang. A few more days, a few more years, we'll be there. Uh, just keep on trying. So maybe to end this, uh, just ask ourselves what keeps keeps us awake, what fuels us in the middle of the night. And that will be seen by the, the, the resources that we'll be able to generate and by the resources that, that we will put into this endeavor of fundraising. So as we as I end this, as I close this, I thank all of you. I thank Father Ricci for for beautifully facilitating uh, this uh, conversation for the different participants, uh, Father Orven, Miss Don, uh, Vincent Lim, and Peps for for joining this uh, this uh, conversation. And of course, to Miss Nicole for being the lead lady uh, on behalf of Miss Glenda. So thank thank you all. And uh, we are hoping for a fruitful and successful fundraising campaign uh, in the coming days. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to generate more resources uh, compared to last year. Hopefully, more than 100% more this year uh, as a proof that we are moving forward as an ecosystem. So thank you all and looking forward to see you in person soon. God bless us all. Good night. Thank you so much, Father Gerald. And again, thank you everyone for being with us tonight as we launch the Spring Rain Global's fourth quarter fundraising campaign. We hope that the in coming weeks, more donors and donations will be added to our giving community. Don't forget to invite your family and friends, partners and donors every Saturday at 8 p.m. Philippine time to join our Saturday program. And before we end, may I request all of you to turn on your cameras for our picture taking. Okay, open your cameras and smile. One, two, three. One, two, three, smile. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night, Thank everybody. you, everyone. Have a restful, restful Saturday evening. Please enjoy Thank this everyone. closing song. Have a restful yeah. evening, everyone. Good night. Good night. Hi, Good night. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Think about um, the generations and to say we want to make it a better place for our children and our children's children so that they, 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 they know it's a better world for them and think they can make it a better place. There's a place in your heart and I know that it is love. It's brighter than tomorrow And if you really try You'll find there's no need to cry In this place you feel there's no hurt or sorrow There are ways to get there If you care enough for the living Make a little space Make a better place Heal the world